Hey YouTube, it's ICU. Today we're going to discuss a couple of very important things in the world of jailbreaking. First of all, Taiji version 2.3, which includes untethered jailbreak support for up to iOS 8.4, as well as the latest iteration of Cydia version 1.1.20. Now to start off, I will have two annotations on the screen now, the first of which will be linked to my untethered jailbreak tutorial, which includes up to iOS 8.4, though if you're on something like 8.3, I definitely recommend updating and jailbreaking. Again, use that guide to do so. And the second one will actually be a link to my top Cydia tweaks to install once jailbroken on iOS 8.4 video. Now with that said, let's go ahead and get straight into this by first of all, talking about Taiji and the past two updates to the utility. So we're now at version version 2.3, I wouldn't be surprised if we receive another new update soon because a new version of Cydia was issued. So that should come bundled with the next Taiji update, but that's not as important as these two. First of all, with version 2.2.1, 2.3's predecessor, it fixed a backdoor in a patch that the team utilized for the jailbreak itself. So essentially it prevented applications from obtaining root privileges through the patch that they used. Thankfully though, Taiji wasted no time issuing an update. It was out almost immediately after the publication of the aforementioned backdoor with inside the latest Taiji jailbreak. So we really don't have anything to worry about. And if you haven't been installing anything sketchy from third party repositories inside of Cydia, you'll be fine. Chances are good though, if you've updated the Taiji untether package inside of Cydia since the 2nd of July, you'll be good to go. Now, as for version 2.3, it completely removes the aforementioned patch, which means it is no longer relevant and that backdoor cannot be utilized for any application to achieve root privileges. Moreover, 2.3 comes bundled with Cydia 1.1.19, which now runs as mobile instead of root. For those of you who are curious as to the difference between mobile and root users in iOS, I will have a link on the screen now to the video where I discuss that very topic. And I also go into depth on what rootless means as far as iOS 9 security is concerned and whether we'll be able to jailbreak the firmware. Now for those who have yet to jailbreak, the previously mentioned tutorial has a direct link to Taiji version 2.3. So if you jailbreak, you will be good to go by default with the latest version. However, if you've already jailbroken and you've been jailbroken since iOS 8.4's release, then you might want to go over to Cydia and install the available updates if you have yet to. So essentially just launch Cydia by default. If you haven't opened Cydia in a while, it will automatically fetch the latest packages and it will display them as updates. So you need to install two things basically if you have yet to. And if you don't see this first one, then you'll be good to go. It's the latest Taiji untether package update. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to it now to show you guys. So as you can see, we have the same exact version as what's found on Taiji's website in the executable format prior to the jailbreak. Taiji 8.1.3 through 8.x untether version 2.3. If you see an update for this package, definitely install it. Again, the latest version does have some massive security improvements and it will prevent applications from gaining root privileges, which definitely could be used for malicious intent on behalf of hackers. So definitely update immediately if you have yet to waste no time installing this latest package, though because it was patched almost immediately following the publication of the backdoor, as I mentioned previously, chances of its actual implementation and widespread adoption amongst hackers are slim to none. Now, next up, we have the latest version of Cydia, which is actually 1.1.20. As I mentioned before, 1.1.19 has been succeeded by today's update, which actually fixes a number of issues that were introduced by Cydia 1.1.19, which in itself was a rather massive update. It now runs as mobile instead of root, which means that other Cydia tweaks that utilize Cydia substrate can actually modify the Cydia installer itself. So previously, if you had tweaks installed that did things like modified the top bar or other applications, they would have absolutely no effect on Cydia. So for instance, at the top here now, I have two things installed that modify this left-hand portion of the status bar. The first one is bars. So instead of the default circular signal strength indicators, I now have the previous bar format as well as Zeppelin, which actually replaces the carrier name with a logo of 
your choice. So now those do have an effect on the latest version of Cydia, and again, packages can modify Cydia installer itself, the look and feel of it. So you may have already have noticed that your tweaks now have an effect on Cydia, which also contains three graphical updates. We have a new restart springboard button, a new return to Cydia button, as well as a new reboot device button. If you install something with inside of Cydia that actually prompts any of those actions, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys really quick what it looks like by upgrading these two packages here, and we'll just take a look at what it says after it's finished. I don't know if you guys saw that at the end or not, but it actually said restart springboard before Cydia crashed, but I'm going to install something else really quick that should prompt a respring. I'll be right back. Okay, so now as you can see down below at the bottom, we have an all new restart springboard button. It's a flat design and we have the exact same format for return to Cydia as well as reboot device. So let's go ahead and just restart our springboard now. All right guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. We have two important security updates as well as kind of just a graphic graphical improvement with inside the latest version of Cydia itself, as well as the ability for tweaks to modify Cydia's look and feel. So expect some new options to come in the future to accomplish just that. I really do hope you guys like this video. If you're a fan of the latest jailbreak, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and massive props to both Taiji as well as Sorik. Guys, they are absolutely on it this time around, and we've received more updates now than ever really before, especially as as far as security is concerned. So again, massive props to them and be sure to leave a comment down below in the comment section as to what your favorite tweaks are. I'd love to hear your list of must have or essential tweaks from Cydia once jailbroken. And if you guys are interested in winning a brand new iPad Air 2, just navigate to freeappsfast.com, sign up. Once you do, come back here, rate this video up, and again, leave that comment in the comment section. I really do hope you guys like this video and if you want to be updated more often, such as when I release new ones covering various things like Taiji, jailbreaking, as well as future iOS updates, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and click that subscribe button down below next to my channel name if you have yet to. Until next time, this is ICU, signing out.